So in this video, I'm doing a quick tour of my video editing desk, computer, and studio setup. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Think Media TV, helping you go further, faster in media. And on this channel, we do video, audio, and lighting tips. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's jump into the studio tour. So the first part of this setup is an Ikea corner desk. Now, I don't think this exact model is around anymore, but you can definitely get things like it. And it's really important, I found, to have a really large desk if you're gonna have dual monitors plus studio monitors for audio and just a lot of space to work. And so it's been perfect for that. It, feel, it fits great in this room. And then I also installed a computer tray that I found on Amazon. I'll link up the exact model in the YouTube description below, but that's been perfect for having good ergonomics uh, for editing video and for working long hours at a time. All right, so to start out, this is a PC build from like 2009. So yes, it's basically the Millennium Falcon when it comes to technology. Kind of old school, but it works. And uh, I love it. It's sitting on top of a shoe rack, which is nice, gets it up off the ground. And it has a bunch of internal hard drives. Windows 7 is what I'm running. It's got an Intel i7 2.6 gigahertz processor, a GTX uh, 760, NVIDIA graphics card, which is great because it definitely uses CUDA cores for um, the Mercury playback engine in Premiere. And so it's definitely not a 4K editing machine. That's what I'm thinking about you know, building out next, but it actually crushes 1080p uh, editing. It's a uh, still a great build and it gets the job done. And then for audio, I've got an Ederol UA25 USB audio interface that is working together with some KRK Rocket 6 CLs. These are actually like limited edition silver because KRK a lot of times is yellow. You'll see on the cones for the uh, studio monitors. Uh, they're kind of a, a cool silver edition that I found. I think I bought those used. And then they're sitting and then they're sitting on some RLX monitor isolation pads. It's these cool kind of foamy uh, pads here, which actually increases the monitor accuracy, plus also lets you kind of play with and adjust the height of your studio monitors. And then under the desk, I've got a KRK 10S subwoofer. Uh, when we lived in an apartment, it was completely irrelevant and unusable because that thing will smash and shake your whole house or your neighbor's apartment. So I just couldn't really use it there. And even at my home now, I keep it almost turned completely off as far as the gain on the sub power so that it doesn't completely disturb my wife during the day. But it is a super cool sub and it just crushes that low end, especially if you're editing projects where you really need to hear that. And then I've got pretty good cables connecting the studio monitors and the sub and the USB audio interface all together. And then behind the monitors is a Furman PL8C power conditioner. What I found if you've worked with studio monitors very much is that sometimes you can get feedback and buzz in those and that the power conditioner did the trick. Cause sometimes if you plug in a different wall outlets, your monitors will pick up a little bit of buzz. And uh, that power conditioner is great as well as it makes me feel like generally the tech is more protected. And then for the actual monitors, I've got two 27 inch monitors with the nice clean bezel. I'll actually link up to a video on the YouTube card. I'll post in the description below of uh, a little bit more detail of those. I love them, they are IPS. And so for the color accuracy, for doing graphic design, Photoshop stuff, as well as editing video, having those really clean IPS monitors is awesome. And the whole setup here is so big, the desk space to have two 27 inch monitors plus the studio monitors, you definitely need a lot of desk space. And then of course I outgrew the internal hard drives quickly inside of the PC. And so I've got uh, all kinds of external hard drives going for video files and storage. And we'll be looking into um, a network area storage in the future and some massive storage. But right now it's just kind of been ragtag, just adding hard drives as I need more space. 
And so that's pretty much the entire setup. And if you're curious about any of the gear mentioned in this video or any of the accessories or details that I forgot, I'll put a complete list in the YouTube description below. Question of the day, what do you edit video on? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. And remember that some of the best tips and creative ideas come from you, the Think Media TV community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comment section. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you haven't downloaded the Think Media TV Video Gear Buyer's Guide, I actually put together a list of the best cameras, lighting, and microphones that I recommend for any budget. And you can grab that for free. I'll link it up on the YouTube card as well as in the description below. Until next time, Think Media TV is helping you go further, faster in media. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon. And I actually keep it almost turned all the way off for the most time uh, here, even in our home, so that my wife uh, doesn't. Uh, um. Uh,